Now, Paul writes a letter to the Thessalonians, and he ends it in chapter 5. He just says, he says, and may your body, mind, and will be blessed of God. But the important thing that I want to focus on, and I preached on this back in June, I think, but the fact that Paul identified us as having those three parts in, in us, our body, our mind, and our, our, our soul, and our emotions. The three things that are listed here that Satan appeals to focuses on those three areas, the earthly side, the sensual side, and the demonic side. Because when you follow the ways of the world, you begin to deal and respond to things emotionally. Now there's a big difference between spirituality and emotionalism. Sometimes you can get, you can get carried away with emotionalism to the degree that you're lost in it. You know what I'm talking about. And God is making a distinction of, of the way Satan goes about doing this. Demonic wisdom is motivated by selfish and selfish and jealous ambition. Notice what it says in James 3.16. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. That identifies the problems that so many people fall into when they, when they follow and get in and come into the trap of Satan. How many times have we looked at something that somebody else had and said, wow, I sure wish I had those. Or man, I would sure like to be able to do what they're doing. <laughs> or I would sure like to be able to go where they're going. Man, I, I deserve that. Man, I would really like it. And you know what I'm talking about. And it's, and it's, it's uh, jealousy and selfish ambition that causes disorder. Now, there's nothing wrong with looking at what other people have and saying, God, that's so great that you've blessed them that way. Thank you for what you've blessed me with. But not to get caught up and trapped by longing or lusting after what somebody else has that God has not brought your way. But it, it makes it very clear here. But the wisdom from above is different than that, it says in verse 17. But the wisdom from above is, pure, is first pure. Well, everything we do with regard to the Lord, if God is in it, it's going to be pure. And it says, and then peaceable. You know, when there's arguments going on and when there is confusion going on, you can just write it down. That's not of God. That's just not of God. Uh, wisdom from above is gentle and reasonable and full of mercy and, and it bears good fruit. It's unwavering and without hypocrisy. You see the difference that, that James points out and he separates the two kinds of wisdom. One is earthly, sensual, and demonic. The other one is pure, peaceable, gentle, reasonable, and you see the difference, and he makes it very clear. This one is from God and from heaven above. I think my thing's rattling in. The other one is from, the, from Satan himself. Okay, now, um, I want you to turn to, or you can, I think he's going to have it up on the screen, Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to look at something that occurred that I know that you are familiar with, but it is a way that earthly reasoning can grip you in a situation without thinking. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. From that time, Jesus Christ began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Jesus is telling his followers, what's going to happen to him. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Peter was rebuking Jesus. Have you ever noticed that? I mean, that's what that says. Peter rebuked him saying, God forbid it, Lord. Now there's an oxymoron. You call him Lord and yet you're rebuking him. 
This shall never happen to you. And look at what Jesus' response was. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God and God's interests, but man's. You see what's happening? Now, at, the, at first glance, it would be normal for Peter to, to say, Well, Lord, we, we don't want to lose you. We don't want you to go and, and, and be tortured and murdered and whipped. No, don't let that happen. And, and Jesus had spent all this time with the disciples explaining to them what the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven was all about and what the, the Son of God must do to bring it into fruition. And, and Peter just didn't get it. Sometimes we just don't get it. We have to back up and look at what God is doing from God's perspective, not from the world's perspective, and sometimes from God's perspective, not from our perspective. Because our perspective is not always right on, is it? Amen. We're influenced by so many things. That's why we need to keep it clearly on God. Clearly on what God would have us do, where God would have us go, where God, uh, what God would have us say. There are many things that we can do and say that by the world's standards <clears throat> are certainly okay. But not by God's standards, are they? And that's what he's making the distinction here on, the fact that there is the world's way which is influenced by Satan and there is God's way that's influenced by the Holy Spirit. And that's the kind of wisdom that he's talking about here. Well, this may have sounded like the right thing to say from a human perspective. It was actually motivated by Peter's self-interests. Godly or heavenly wisdom has its characteristics like we've read here. But I want to read in... Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. I think it's up there for you to look at. Now listen to this. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. What are we looking for when we want the, the word of God to richly dwell within us? Well, what we're looking for is for that that word to mold us, to guide us, to direct us, so that it will influence us more than anything else. He says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. What we do here when we come to worship, what we do in our Bible studies, what we do when we meet together for fellowship and prayer, all of it is to grow in the things of God. God wants us to be the very best that we can be, and He gives us that opportunity. But we are responsible for not letting the world creep in and affect what God is revealing to us and what God is showing us. Now, let's, let's bring it down to where we are. All of us have had to deal with our kids, haven't we? Amen. Sometimes, I've got four kids. <clears throat> Sometimes I don't even know how I made them. <laughs> because they are all four very different. The oldest one is 45. The youngest one is 18. And they're all different. The oldest and youngest are boys, the two middle ones are girls. And I don't even remember those years because they were so tough. But when we raise kids, we want them to grow up with the right kind of standards and the right kind of morals and the right kind of guidance and the right kind of direction. And that's why Christians are always encouraging to get children in, in Sunday school and, and worship to be involved in their church 
in some capacity somewhere. And of course, that's old fashioned, isn't it? Yeah, we don't do that anymore. Nah. I can watch it on TV if I want to watch it. Well, are you going to be watching it? Well, not today, obviously. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Our children and our grandkids, sometimes we don't even know where they're coming from. But do you think God thinks anything has changed? Are the rules still the same? Are the guidelines still the same? Is the word still the same? Is the Bible still the same? Nothing's really changed, has it? But every generation has a new interpretation of it. I have a guy that works for me. A young boy. He's one of Jonathan's friends. Him and Jonathan are my two gophers. And they, they do all the dirty work. They go to the dump. They do demolition. And they, they run and get supplies and stuff. And they're a couple of good kids. This young man, him and his mom and dad, they go to um, Calvary Chapel. And he's been in Calvary Chapel most of his whole life. And I could tell, I, I knew the minute I met him, that he was a, was a believer and that he had a different point of view than the average kid. You can tell right away. I don't know if you can, I can't, but yeah, you can tell. Well, I was thinking, uh, you know, we, we talk all the time and, and, uh, and, uh, because we have long drives and we're in the truck and we're all talking and stuff. Well, this weekend he went to San Diego with some friends of his to a gaming conference. You know what gaming is? Okay, you know the things that kids do on the internet, the games they play? You know, they're scattered. What? <laughs> That's gaming. It's referred to as gaming, and there's all kinds of games. Um, Grand Theft Auto. Name one. The Legends of Heroes. Uh, and it goes on and on. And brother, I want to tell you something. This carries them away. It takes them to a different land. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Amen. I've seen some eyes rolling. I, I, I know you know me. <laughs> but anyway, I, and I'm, so he's telling me, yeah, I need to make sure that I'm back no later than 5 o'clock on Friday because we're leaving to San Diego going to this gaming conference at the University of San Diego, or what is it, Cal State University San Diego, or San Diego State, or whatever. So I said, so, what, what do you do at a gaming? I do. But I said, what do you do at a gaming conference? Oh, we're going to have some competition, we're going to have games. What are some of the games I can do? Well, uh, I'm going to be doing this, and I, I knew the games, because I have a son. And I know exactly what he's talking about. And so... He said this, and I said, wow, that's a lot of bloodshed, isn't it? <laughs> and so we began to talk, well, yeah, but it's just a game. It's just a game. You see how we explain it? It's just a game. But the game becomes reality, doesn't it? Like Columbine and Sandy Hook and San Bernardino and other places where it became reality. With a gun. You see how Satan tricks us? And how Satan engages us? And it's not just our kids, and it's not just with, with um, gaming, and it's not just with, with uh, computer games and stuff like that. We're all that way. We all get engaged by Satan in some way. We have the opportunity to go his way or the Lord's way. I was coming out of the uh, grocery store. Day before, yesterday, I was coming out of Bonds and I had a cart and um, I had some water and a couple things and I came in. And this man and woman uh, were just talking and they, and they had their basket there and they were, in the, they were blocking everybody. And, and they, they, they were, it was innocent, they just didn't notice. They were talking, well, should we do this or should we do that? And I, opened, and I said, um, excuse me. And she turned around and said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I said, road rage. <laughs> and she laughed. Because we know about road rage, don't we? And what happens with road rage, just because we are impatient. I mean, think about all the things that happens to us that carries us away with emotionally, and in the flesh, and in the world. I mean, my gosh, and I haven't even covered the sensuality part, because it's too embarrassing for me to deal with. 
You know what I'm talking about? Amen. My gosh. Do you see the difference between what Sam, what uh, James is talking about here, the two kinds of wisdom, and how easy it is to fall into the wrong one? And so, we see kind of what we're up against. And when we look around and we see the empty chairs, and when we see a, a Sunday that comes up like today where our numbers are rather small, which, by the way, hasn't been happening much lately. This is the first low attendance we've had in some time. But neither here nor there. What is it that keeps us away from being where we're supposed to be when God is leading us? Something is wrong. It's a rat race, and the rat's winning, and guess who the rat is? It's Satan. Now, I'm not one of these kind of guys that goes around finding demons under every plate and under every chair and under every table. <laughs> but they're there. Because Satan is out to get us. He's out to destroy us. He's out to discredit us. He's out to do whatever he can to, to twist and taint the truth of the gospel and the truth of godliness. And you know I'm right. Because we see it every day. Amen. You don't have to watch TV for very long and you pick right up on it. You don't have to listen to the radio for very long and you pick right up on it. Folks, I suppose probably what we need to do is do just what James said in chapter 1. And I'll read it one more time and I'll close. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and gives, who gives to all men generously and without reproach and it will be given to you. We need to see the things of God. To actively, thinking about it, see the things of God. Remember that book I told you about that um, I read a long time ago and I think some of you have read, What Would Jesus Do? One of the remarkable things about this book was the fact that they made a decision, these people that got together, Christians, they, did, they decided that from now on, I am not going to make any decision unless I first ask myself, what would Jesus do? We need to think of things from God's perspective so that these little ones will grow up knowing the truth. And when they get old enough to know the truth, they'll be able to recognize the difference between the two. Amen? Let's stand up, Bow your heads, please. I know that every one of us knows somebody, and it may even be you, that just really needs direction from God. That needs to make some wise decisions. That maybe needs to change some things that they're doing and turn it towards the Lord's way. You know what I'm talking about. Let's, let's bow and pray about this for just a moment. Let's say, God, 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 would you please help me to go in the right direction? Would you please help me to be a wise man or a wise woman? Help me to be able to raise my children and have an influence on my grandkids in a, in a godly, wise way. God, help me to make wise decisions in my life. And by the way, you're never too old for that. Wisdom is something that we seek at all ages. Father God, I just pray that you would help us to be wise in all that we do. In what we say, in how we say it, in, in what our decisions are. That we would honor you, Father, in all of our decisions that we would honor you in the way we live, that we would be more like